Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to have a very brief video. We're going to show you how to do something that I do a lot. And if you do any scientific or engineering applications or analysis, um, you probably are involved with this quite a bit. And what we're going to show you today is how to load from a text file into, in our case, a C Sharp Windows Forms application in Visual Studio, where we bring a text file in and convert the data in that file to values like doubles where we can then analyze them and chart them and whatever. So here's an example that we've been, uh, we did in another video where I'm going to load from a CSV file and I'll click on the button and you can see it brings up a dialog where I can select which file I want to load. And we've also added in our application a filter you can see down here on the bottom right where we're specifying I only want to see files shown that have a .csv extension. So we've got the file, we select it, hit open, and you can see it takes all of the data in that file. There are 1,200 points, each with a time and a value separated by a comma otherwise known as a CSV or comma separated value file. And it is appended those into a text box so you can actually see what's in the file. Um, again, I really like CSV files. It's a simple text file that has um, data that's really good for engineering and science applications. And if you look at the actual file, I can just open it up in Notepad, Notepad++ and see the actual data. You don't need a specific database software to do it. It's very simple text file. You can open up and look at the actual data and scroll through and see what you've actually got. So it's really wonderful way to deal with data and also gives you some feedback, some easy feedback where you can just look at the data and see, you know, if everything is the way you expect when you're building your application. So here we've loaded um, from that CSV into our application. And what I can now do is I can hit show chart and it will plot all of those time and value values. And here is our chart. It turns out to be a sine wave. And then I can hit another button to modify it as we showed in the other videos where we talk about this particular application where we're opening up multiple forms in C Sharp Windows Forms. So what we're going to show you is how to do that, how to get this text file open. And as you can imagine, each one of these lines in this text file is a string. Since a CSV file is basically just text or strings, each line, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take each line and somehow parse it so that we've got two values, a time and a value, and get rid of that comma and have two separate values. And then we're going to have to convert them from strings into doubles or whatever so that we can actually plot them in our chart or analyze them however we want. So. We're going to read it in. We're going to have to parse it into two strings or however many strings in each line. And then we're going to have to convert those to doubles. So we're going to show you now how to do that in our application. So here is the method I'm going to use to read that data and put it into some lists. And this public void read CSV to lists. Now you can also put that data as you when you convert it to doubles, you can put it into lists, you can put it into arrays. Um, we're doing a little bit of both here just to show you how to do it. But it's basically figuring out how to convert those lines of strings into individual components that are doubles or whatever. So the first thing we have to define the array of strings that contains each line of the CSV file. For example, one element of this array of strings is going to have this entire string of the first time and value separated by a comma. So we're going to have this string array called lines. Then we are also defining a string array of string called strnums, which is an array of strings that contain individual strings of each element on a line. strnums is the zeroth element is going to be the first, the time value, and the first element is going to be the value. All right. So we now we've got our two arrays, and once we've got this str nums, you can imagine we can just parse that into a double. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what's called this open file dialog, where we we click the button and it gave us a list of files to select from. So we, it's an open file dialog, which is in the system windows forms. I'm calling it OFD, is new open file dialog. 
Now, we can set the initial directory where it goes to look for the file we want. And I'm going to say it's in D documents logs. You can put wherever you want, but that's the initial directory. It's going to go to give you a list of files that you can select. And here is the filter we talked about, OFD.filter. And in quotes, we have CSV, which we are defining a name of the type of file. And I'm choosing to call it CSV and with this or character. And then we are saying we want only star.csv, all the files with a CSV prefix. Now, if that all worked out, if the user went, found the correct file, if that dialog result is OK, if OFD show dialog equals dialog result OK, if it returned an OK and we got the file, then what we have to do is read all of the lines of that file, all of the text lines, into this array of strings that we set up on top. And what this does is it makes a array that is the length of all of the lines in that file. And we're using OFD.FileName, which is the result of that dialog box. So when you select it, it goes into OFD file name, And then we are saying file read all lines. And what that does is it opens the file reads all of the lines, and then closes the file, and stores each line as one element in this line's string array. Now, you can also use um, a stream reader, which is a little bit more complex, and it's a little bit better for, say, larger files. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. I prefer file read all lines. It's a little bit more straightforward. Um, but really, if everything works out, then we read all of the lines into this array of strings, and now we're all set to parse each line individually into doubles. Now, one thing you can do that this is just an option that I'm not going to use is you can instantiate a new multi-dimensional array of doubles where each element contains the two values. So the time and value is each element in this multi-dimensional double array. I'm not using that. You can use that if you want, but that's just there for information. So once we've got all of this, these lines as strings in this array, for each string S in that lines array, we can go through, we can parse it, and save it as doubles. Um, so what I've done here, textbox one.append text, which you saw in the beginning, um, for each string, I'm just sending it out to the, I'm appending it to the text box, as you saw, and it's listing all of the elements in the text box as some feedback. Um, to show that everything's okay. Then what I do is I do S dot split. So for each line, I split it with this CSV delimiter, this comma delimiter. I split it and put that into the SDR nums array that we defined up here, which is a um, string array. And that's going to have two elements. It's going to have the time value as one element and the value as the second element. Now I've got a two element array of string nums. And what I can do is just take those individual values, convert it to doubles and save it to our list or whatever. I'm doing for string num zero, which is a string showing the time value. I'm converting that to double and adding it to a list. And in our case, we're using a um, xval static dot add, um, but you can use whatever you want. You're basically adding each element to a list. And the same thing for the time, I'm adding it to another list of Y values. Um, as you've gone through this for each to all the lines in the, in the CSV file, you've now added them and you've populated two lists, one of X values and one of Y values. Now, if you need them in array form, we've already got them. So there's two ways to do it. Um, whether you want lists or arrays is up to you. But that's about it. So you can see how it's very simple to take a CSV file. And again, if you've got more than two elements, maybe you have a time value and two Y values for two different uh, waveforms or whatever, you can do the same thing using this. So it's pretty straightforward. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.